Well, hi there everybody. Today I'd like to show you a technique called blind embossing. And this is a particularly useful technique to know about when you want to emboss a piece of card but you don't have A, an embossing machine, or perhaps you don't have that specific embossing folder. You might find an object that is at home and you think, gosh, that would be a nice design. So let me explain to you what you're going to need to get started and then I will discuss with you how to go about it. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to have a stencil of some sort. This could be either a commercial stencil or it could be something that you've made. And you want to be able to place the stencil up against a light source. So it could be like what I've got here is a little light box that I'm going to be using today. Or you could actually just use something like a window in your home. And if you are using a window at your home, what you do is simply put your stencil onto the light source. So you would put your stencil on the window with some masking tape and then tape your card on top of that. So I'm going to do the same thing that you do on a window, but just with my light box. So I've got my stencil and underneath that I've got the card. So I'm going to turn that over and you'll see now with the light shining through it, that it's very easy to actually see where the outline of the stencil is. So you can use either an embossing tool, um, which is this with a round ball tip to emboss, or you could use something like one of these paper stubs, which um, you use in your artwork. Either or works. Um, if you don't have any of these tools, you could get a really big crochet hook or knitting needle with a more rounded edge and use that. That will also work possibly even a cotton bud. I haven't tried it with that, but just thinking it might. So what you want to do is just to press firmly, but not too hard, and go around the outline of the actual stencil. You don't want to press so hard that you go through the actual card, and you'll find that, that unless you've got a very light hand, it's not easy to do this on paper. Well, certainly not for me. I always press through that. So you want to just go around these outline edges all the way around on both sides. If your hand slips a little bit and it goes on top of where the stencil area is, don't worry about that because it's not actually going to show through. And similarly, if it slips and it goes on the inside of the card, that doesn't work either in terms of making a mark. So you've actually got a very, very nice, easy format. So now I'm going to turn my stencil over and I'm going to remove it from the background. And you'll see here, I'm sorry, I've really battled with the light with this video. I've done it several times, but you can see that it's actually got an embossed edge to it. And once you've got your embossed edge, you can create all sorts of things. Just want to show you one or two things here. If you have done a design and you've pressed too hard, you're going to get this kind of mark here where you've actually got the, um, the, the embossing tool going through that and that's going to always be a problem in terms of a card but it doesn't stop you cutting this out or perhaps decorating it in some way so that you can see. I've also colored around the outside edge of this particular design just quickly with a stamp pad so that you can see that it does have a nice little raised lip here and it gives you an opportunity to decorate that once you've finished. So here's just a quick um, thing that I've done with my one embossed leaf just turn that into a birthday card. I'm not the best card maker in the world, but I did want to show you this technique. So that's one, one technique, just quietly putting the stencil design on top of the embossed area and then just using a stamp pad to stamp through that. And then here was a little bird that I did as well, um, where I just simply took a black pen and just drew in some detail. So we've got two different examples here of how to work with this embossing technique. I do hope this is helpful for you because I find often when I have been teaching in the past, um, we either don't have access to equipment, which we certainly didn't have in our country for many years, we couldn't get a lot of things, or perhaps it's a question of affordability, or perhaps it's just that question of it's a once-off project and you don't really want to spend money on something that you're not going to use again. Please leave your comments below, I'd really love to hear from you and click the subscribe button so that you get future videos. I do a wide range of crafts, so there's plenty for everyone there. Bye for now.